Productions. You guys are selling weed. Well, yeah. Yeah, I didn't say, but we all know <laughs> the weed. I, I mean, it's legal now, so. Illegal at a point. point. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah. So, how long you how long you still for? Like a few years, whatever. Because um, I come and get, breed a girl and she get pregnant. Children now come in, renting. Money was needed even more. So, at about, about a three years, four years, I come and get locked up. That is what slow me down from the hustle, and, um, I get locked up, and I, and I get locked up in a bad situation where my daughter was in my house, and it was me and she alone, and the police running, and it was real challenging for she, being my daughter, you know? I remember after I come out of jail and tried to carry she back in the house, she crying, and she didn't want to go in the house because she's saying, Daddy, you can lock up, you know? So, they are kind of ring mares, you know, I do people that say, ring mares and say, I do cool it, I have a daughter. And that kind of calm me down too. Yeah. So, you get locked up. Mm -hmm. And you, you, how long you was inside for? No, how, was the, how, how was the experience? Yeah. I died in no way, no, 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 nobody should want to be. That was not a pretty experience at all. Because it's inside there, I started looking for our next job. In. It's inside jail I made the decision after my daughter had to see that, I see. And I turned that. So now I know I was, my bill was close, I buy a papers and I started to look for work and search work and I finally got a place that was willing to interview me when I come out. So you basically landed an interview in jail? <laughs> yeah, weird, but yeah. Because, you know, you got a phone to make a call in the jail. I mean, that no, no. And um, at the time, it was the same thing. Mm. So I got a phone and I make some calls. People was laughing at me in the cell. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, but you, you looking for a walk in jail? You yeah, understand? But I know I was coming out. Yeah, little, so little do I, they know. <laughs> I know my bail was making up and I know the progress of my bail. So I was, and I, I actually carded the interview for the coming week, knowing that the weekend wasn't supposed to meet. So you landed, the, the, you, you went the interview and you landed this job? Yeah, I landed the job as marketing manager. But it wasn't a paying job. The job was based on bringing in clientele, you know, basically. You will get paid from where you bring in, which it take me a while to do. Because that is when I start the degree too. That is when I start to study. So I was balancing school, that, and I had to hustle to make money to pay for the two. Because the work wasn't paying yet. Mm. You know, the work was paying in the long run, which it did in the long run because I worked for like a year with no money, close to a year, no zero dollars, but I'm making contacts and I'm meeting people. And right after that year, I went into overdrive, contracts, contracts off. My salary went from 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000. I was making more money than the operations manager at that time. Mm. You, you were trying to take people position. <laughs> <laughs> that that why I didn't last long, you know. And mm. I realized too that it it was beneficial for me to branch off. Me and the boss are real good, you know. I still my real good friend, you know, the ex my ex boss. But at the point in time, I knew I was destined for plenty more, so I resigned. With a smile and a bounce and I take my salary and I start predominant and that is where my focus was before I started music. Grandma focus still is because I'm a bread and butter 
predominant security. So you, I, so you leave the job? Yeah, I resign. You leave the job, you resign, mm -hmm. start your own company, mm -hmm. making your own money, calling your own shots. And straight up to now, my company still exists just because of the corona, I probably are less contracts than before, but mm. that is still how I live in and pay my bills, you know? Okay, so how you, what gave you the idea to start a label? Well, I always singing from small. I singing in school, I singing. I seen my mother singing as a child. My mother was Queen Shaka. And my mother was a Calypsonian, a big Calypsonian. She won Calypso Queens in 1994. Plus, my father used to live in America, but he used to sing Calypso too. You understand? And that is where the love for the music probably come manifest. And when the corona take place the other day, I home, nothing to do, have a little money, and I invest in my, all my equipment, full haul. But remember that so they just break in Trinidad. So so wait, wait, wait. You start this label yeah. a couple of months ago? Yeah, like literally a couple of months ago. But I was always surrounded by people that liked the music too. Dancehall was never really a short thing in Trinidad. Now that it all day, it gave people like me a chance to jump in it. But before I always surrounded with people who love the, the art too. So seeing that, you know, you, you mentioned <coughs> Corona, you know, how do you think the government handling this Corona virus? Handle so far, up to just before recently, real good. But right now, I find they're kind of naive, you know, the airport should open, the place need to learn to survive with corona that is just my i just think that 10 more months at the airport lock is going to be the same learning to survive with corona right. so, i, I kind of agree because you know i believe this is actually the new norm yeah right. you know it's, it's like people have to every individual have to learn to adapt to that whole do the right things to prevent from getting the virus even I though am. I don't think it could really prevent it eh? but because it's there it there and we have to realize you know it's there and just I try agree. to live until it fades out yeah. so how, the, the the pandemic how it was for you with your company though that was a big lash you know so <laughs> I, that was a big lash. I don't know for other companies, but me, like I feel like that pandemic was personal on me, but because plenty of contracts had to cease and start back. Some of them without even security. We still thank God for the few that still we still have, but the transition was a whole big scare. Yeah, and still is. Right. So basically, it was home a lot. During because the of the, during the, the pandemic, because you know, yeah, yeah, you didn't have much contracts going and stuff. So you launch a record label. Knock it knock, records. Knock it records. Yeah, that is the knock it everybody talking about the in the streets now. Knock it records launch then and there. Yeah, that is when we bring on Phoenix Seven, Tech Nine, Survival. And we just start to create magic like we know how to create magic musically, you know. Big, big up my boy Noble Touch still, because he come and supply you with the first set of rhythms to launch Knock It. So Noble is the mastermind behind the music. Yeah, the rhythms and the mix and the master. He had to get that forward still. Jackie Jacket. So you all central bass, central Trinidad. Yeah. You know, and you know, they're creating a buzz right now because if you really, you walk the streets, if 10 car pass, you must hear one. You have to hear knock it, knock it, making that statement in the streets right now. That way we aiming to do too. And we aiming to help plenty youths too the same way, right from Central, who do have a 
forum to voice the voice. You know? Knock it records is the place.